Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last video I gave you a brief introduction to vectors and in this video we are going to talk about how to work with vectors using vector arithmetic. So in the first section I have defined the two vectors as seen right here. We might change the second one during the video but let's see. So we'll start with the addition and the addition is quite straightforward so we add the first vector to the second vector and what that does it can be seen below. So the first element of the first vector is added to the first element of the second vector and so on. So 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 plus 3, 4 plus 4, 5 plus 5 and 6 plus 6. That's very straightforward. Now if we comment this out and uncomment the second line and execute this, you can see that this 10 is applied to the whole vector. So from the first to the sixth element we add this 10 as can be seen below. So keep that in mind. The same goes for subtraction, so if we subtract the first vector from the second vector and we get a vector with entries full of zeros. If we now subtract 10 from the whole vector, every element will be subtracted by 10, so 1 minus 10 is minus 9 and so on to the end. Next we go to division, so for division we have the first vector element-wise division by the second vector and we need this element-wise because if we do it like this, we just get 1. So if you want to have a vector back, you need to do it element-wise. So the first element will be divided by the first one, and so on. The same as before. So here you get a vector. If you don't use this point, it's not element-wise, so the whole vector is divided by the second vector and you get 1. Now if we do element division here, like by a number, again every vector is applied with this operation, so 1 divided by 5, 2 divided by 5, to the end. For multiplication, it's almost the same, so here we have first vector times the second vector, but also again here element-wise, so 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, and so on. If we remove this, what comes out is an error, because we cannot do multiplication by vectors in this sense. So you have to pay attention on the dimensions, which we'll talk about later. Element multiplication wise, we take one vector, which is the first vector right here, and multiply it by a scalar, which is 5, and every element again will be multiplied by this element we have defined right here. So for exponentiation, it's the same with element wise operation. You take the first vector, apply this, the first vector to the operation, and you get this huge vector right here and with the second vector here if we apply this to you will see what happens it's basically that every entry gets this exponent of 2 so 1 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 2, 3 to the power of 2 and so on. So now some important remarks we created a vector here which is called a from 1 to 11 and a vector b which goes from 20 to 30 you can have a look at these vectors by double clicking in the workspace to have a closer look at them. So we now define the temp1 variable right here, which takes the vector a and does an element-wise multiplication with vector b, as can be seen here. So we execute this, and what you can see is, is this result right here. So both are row vectors, and we do element-wise multiplication. So 1 times 20, you can see this is the first element, and at the end we have this 11 times 30, which can be seen right here. So that's also very easy to understand. And for the second example, we take the transpose of the vector A, which is a column vector, and do an element-wise multiplication with a vector B, and that gives us a matrix. And I will show you later on a nice mnemonic how you can imagine or better understand what vector will come out uh, depending on what dimensions these vectors have. Now let's jump to temp3, which takes the vector A times the transpose of the vector itself, which will give us a scalar. Exactly, and here is the prerequisite is that these vectors have the same size, length, respectively, let's say, respectively, that means the vector and the matrix must have the same dimensions to make this operation work. So for this line here, I've put them together because this what we have done here is nothing else than the dot product of vector A, comma vector A. So this takes two arguments and calculates the dot product of vector A and itself. So you can see below it will do the same here, it's 506 again. And what it will do is to take the entry of vector A, the first one, 
and multiplies it with the first one again and adds the elements as can be seen here. So second element times second element plus third element times third element plus fourth and so on. That should be clear. We now move to plotting vectors and what it's useful for. So we uncomment this. If we now execute this, comment this again, we can see figure three. This is figure two and this is figure one. So we take figure one first. This is the so-called useless plot as I've called it. And we see that we plot this temp2 vector that we have defined right here and we plot it right here and it's not very meaningful. What we can do though is create a new figure, what we've done here, and then create an image SC for temp2 and that's this one right here. So the top right corner you can see this color map and to add the color bar the right hand side for all the values you can type in color bar. And as a third figure, let's just close this one, for the third vector you can see, let's just make it a little bit bigger, the first vector is here, and if we multiply this first vector by 2, we get a line that looks like this, just to get an understanding on how the values will change, and the yellow line here above the blue line is in parallel, which is easy to interpret because every element gets a 2 added to its value. So these are methods to visualize vectors or matrices. So as a mnemonic for resulting vector sizes, I've put a link here in the script, which you can just open. And if you open this link, after equation 32, you can see the mnemonic. And make sure to reload the page if you see any math processing error with the MathJax plugin. So we load the page. This is supposed to be the finite element method. So we go to the page, scroll a bit down, look for equation 32. You can have a look at the other mathematical operations as well, for sure, because we need linear algebra in the future. So here we have it, 32, and here's the mnemonic. Let's say you have a vector A, which is 1 times M, and M times N. What we do then is to delete these the same components of the top right and lower left corner, and the resulting vector is this 1 times N vector. So to have a concrete example right here, we had, we, let's take this example for instance, we had temp1, or let's take temp2, temp2 is better, we write it right here, I will delete it afterwards, so temp2, vec a is a 1 times 11, and by transposing it we get an 11 by 1 vector, and the vector b is in 1 times 11 vector. So we apply this mnemonic, and this one will be killed with this one, and the resulting vector should be 11 by 11. And if we have a look at temp2, that's 11 by 11. So very nice mnemonic in case you don't really understand how vector multiplication or matrix multiplication works. So that's it.